year 2000, in March, this person came on the internet and he went into a couple of science forums and he said, I'm a time traveler from the future and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. And for a period of about three months, he answered questions about science, technology, the future. He made what some people consider to be predictions. And at the time, nobody really took him seriously. It wasn't until after he left, about three months later, that some of the things that he said started to happen. And the snowball just started at that point, and more and more people started paying attention to it. You're listening to Canary Cry Radio. Now here are your hosts, Basil and Gons. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Canary Cry Radio this week. I am back, and my name is Basil. And I'm Gons, and Basil's back. I'm back. We missed a couple weekends because... Of just inexplicable life circumstances that resulted in, uh, you know, priorities having to be shuffled around. And so we appreciate you guys hanging with us and coming back for another episode. Um, I hope we didn't, you know, leave you too out in the uh, out in the open there. I hope you guys made it. Well, I think it, it was a Friday. We didn't post one on Friday. I think it was two Fridays. Two Fridays in a row. I don't know who's even left out there to listen to us right now. Well, we're going to keep chugging away. I guess we'll just keep going. But, uh, (laughs) 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 yeah, we wanted to, before we jump into our topic today, which is John Teeter and the time traveler or the potential time traveler, we just wanted to encourage you guys who are left listening we basically we started a forum on canarycryradio.com yeah. a few weeks ago uh, under a just a, a comment that came from someone that said, "Hey, you know, uh, it would be great if you guys had a forum to to keep track of uh, some of the comments and the conversations that were going on in the comment section." And we did it. And we we did listened. It. Yes, it we, happened. We responded and we With made it happen. With your words, and it's called the wire. So if you go to canarycryradio.com. And click on the forum tab, and once you're in the forum tab, look for a link that says The Wire. Uh, it's sort of, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see it there. Yeah. And once it's, you- it's, it's not the easiest thing to use. I'll admit that. It's not the easiest forum, but it is great anyways, and I recommend everybody go there. Yeah, and it's our, it's our first attempt at... Uh, you know, doing something like that. So, Yes. You got to sign up. You got to get a little user guy, and then um, go at it. And you will be a hatchling. You'll be a hatchling. Just go for it. And we'll see you there. Yeah, and we'll, talk, we, we'll talk about crazy things. We've had good good uh, conversations in there already. And I think uh, those of you have who have posted know that we're going to try to respond and be active in the forum as well. So right. Basil and I will both check in daily to make sure that... Uh, you um, guys are playing nice. <laughs> <laughs> may have to start locking you some of you guys down um in the internet yeah. jail so make sure internet jail yeah that's our new thing is internet jail <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, yeah so go check it out the forum it's awesome yeah and um we're gonna start reading some emails too which i know we've yeah. said that like 10 times but yeah we say a lot about it but you know we keep our promises in our own time and and you know shouldn't we just just that should just be a thing, right? Yeah, and if you can time travel into the future, maybe you'll already see that we already have read emails. On yeah, there. we we did. If you were in the future, you would have seen that. But you would be so, in a different timeline. This will all make sense in a moment. We'll get into that later. <laughs> so we wanted to talk about John Teeter, the time traveler in this episode. And um, there's probably a lot of you listening that have at least heard of John Teeter, have heard the story... I just imagine so many people either rolling their eyes right now or just getting like so pumped that we're just about to talk about this. Because <laughs> that's honestly, that's just what the story is. And, and obviously we're going to come at it and, uh, from a you know, Christian perspective and we're going we're gonna to get serious about it. But this, this guy, this time traveler who can, you know, okay, I guess we'll just, let's just, let's just give him his intro. Yeah, okay. So okay. basically, John Teeter uh, became a sensation through Coast to Coast AM. Um, but 
it, it, it really is a fascinating topic to discuss because of the potential, um, uh, the significance, I guess. The What's the word I'm looking for? I have no idea. Um, yeah, anyway. I can't time travel into your brain <laughs> and figure it out. No, okay. So this is the story. Around uh, the end of the year 2000, there was a gentleman with a username of time traveler zero underscore zero underscore zero thank you gons and (laughs) and trying to 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 keep it you know factual that's how we deal we deal in facts (laughs) here in canary cry radio um so what was it c2 cam was that the name of the forum or the yeah that was the first one Allegedly. First one. Well, he 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 was all over the internet for a while. Okay, at the at starting, I believe November of the year two thousand, he started coming on and telling everybody that he was a time traveler and started asking questions and answering questions and all sorts of stuff, and it caused quite an uproar. Right, and and it didn't really. Uh, it's it sort of the phenomenon sort of spread. You know, it, when he was posting these things, it wasn't, I don't think, a huge deal. It was just sort of a strange phenomenon for those involved. But, right. um, you know, once it was on Coast to Coast, it definitely became a huge story, uh, something people latched onto. And I mean, the story now is so huge that something you can't Google some things without his name coming up as like the first 10 pages or something like right. some, you know, some things uh, attached to his story, just regular items that you'd never think about. Right. Like, like all you can find is John Teeter stuff. Right. So John Teeter claims that he came from the year 2036 and that he, um, what's the story here? I mean, the, the story is very, very complex. And okay. So, so basically he, he works, for the military right. in 2036, which we can get into it later, but looks nothing like the the military as we think about it. Um, and w- I mean, it gets into some things like alternate world lines, parallel universes, things like that. So, so it's it's very complicated to piece everything together. So you might have to go through and do some digging yourself. But anyways, John Teeter is this guy from 2036. He's spending his, uh, I believe it's a required um, amount of time in the military. And he is in a division called Temporal Recon. Now the story is that in 2036, there has been World War III, um, you know, I mean, it, World War Three happened in 2015, so he says, and so the world is just piecing itself back together in 2036, and so um, a lot of and the, a lot of things need to be retrieved from the past. I th- I think to to repair the damage, like uh, uh, his particular mission was to come back to 1975 and uh, retrieve a computer, an IBM 5100. Uh, and the reason they needed this computer was so they were able to read and write in a certain computer language that um, they had discovered the IBM 5100 was uh, one of the only computers that can translate the languages that they were trying to, to work with. So that was his job, was to go back into 1975, pick up an IBM computer, and bring it back to 2036. Um, but along the way, he decided, I'm going to stop by the year 2000. It's kind of a big deal. I'm going to stop by and check it out. And... Uh, so he does, and he, then here he is, twelve years ago, just about um, in the year two thousand, uh, just sort of hanging out with his family from the past. He, uh, John Teeter was born in nineteen ninety eight, is the story, and so he he visits his family while he's here and visits his two year old self. So he's just kind of hanging out there. Okay, now that's the story. Now he's here. Now he's talking to everybody on the internet for some reason. And uh, now we just, you know, start learning about this guy. Well, yeah, and and there are some teeter devotees that claim that he first actually came in 1998 to warn about Y2K. 
And he, uh, if you read some of those posts from 1998, he's actually pretty frantic about Y2K and, 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 you know, warning everybody and things like that. Right. It's not clear that it was him, um, but the the teeter apologists, if you will, right. say that um, that was a different John Teeter from a different timeline, yeah. which we'll explain, or world line. And we'll, we'll explain that as we get into this. So basically, the entire story is predicated on what's called the Elliot Wheeler theory. Uh, it's it's basically the many worlds theory. And um, Basil, do you want to sort of explain that in sure. those terms? So- sure, yeah. This is definitely a complicated thing, but it is pivotal to the whole John Teeter story. Now, basically, what John Teeter talks about is time travel is not necessarily um, as simple as it sounds. There are basically multiple parallel universes. Uh, To be more precise, there's infinite parallel universes that he calls world lines. Okay, now this is not a new concept. This is a concept that's been around for um, a little while, not not half a century know. or so yeah it's, it's it's nothing you know ancient but uh but yeah and the, and this is basically the theory that with every choice that we make um an alternate universe branches off and uh you know then the two choices just go on you know and create their own universe and which i mean it, it gets very messy it's a very messy thing right. and i enjoy the theory in more of a mathematical sense in a in scientific statistical sense which is i believe what the what the theory was originally um used for i mean if you if you're familiar with um, quantum physics and schrodinger's cat and things like that this is not this is something that's pretty wildly widely used in more of a mathematical sense um but what john teeter is saying is when you travel in time, you're not even necessarily traveling within your own world line. You are almost skipping around this infinite number of, uh, of alternate universes. Right. And so to me that, that immediately causes me to ask a very important question. I think to the whole theory is that now is this only from the perspective of a conscious being or a sentient being, or is this, you know, if, if, uh, if, if a, pe- you know, a, a sand pebble moves a different direction or whatever, is every possibility of every object right. here in the universe branch off into a different alternative possibility, or is it just for sentient conscious beings? Right. And see, this is where it gets pretty complicated and I'm going to try to slow it down so we can, so we can get a firm grasp on this concept. Um, basically it is predicated on, um, a sentient observer making a choice, um, that creates, uh, an alternate world line. However, things that happen without a sentient observer being a human being or, I don't know, a dog, I guess, also works. Um, It it becomes very sketchy because uh, tied in with this whole thing is the the concept of, um, I mean, what is existence when we're not there looking at it, right? right? Um, Like if a tree falls in the woods and there's nobody there to hear it, doesn't make a sound, Right. The scientific answer, the real answer is no, it does not make a sound. It makes vibrations, but there are no colors, there are no sounds, there are no, uh, no actions being taken unless there is an observer to see it and to interpret it and to give this sort of mishmash of molecules and vibrations meaning. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, totally. Uh, there's a, a Dr. Sten Odenwald quote that, that I'm going to read that I think kind of sums it up. I, I think you did a pretty good job of explaining it there. Uh, but the quote is, um, in the many worlds interpretation, the universe is constantly spinning off alternate histories of itself, and human consciousness is along for the ride as a passive agent. 
Each time any system changes its quantum state, a whole new universe is spawned that is totally unobservable to all its other copies which represent other outcomes for the quantum state. There is no observer involved in this process, but each observer has an infinite number of copies of itself and states of its consciousness. <laughs> so, Yeah, it's a complicated thing for sure. And, and I like to think of it more in the mathematical sense where mathematically, all if, if you're looking at making a choice, mathematically, there are an infinite number of um, results that c- can come from whichever choice you choose or y- you know what I mean. Right. And until you consciously make a choice, um, it, only when you make a choice does this mathematical cloud of, of, of possibilities collapse down into the choice that you chose. Right. Now, mathematically, I do believe that those other choices do go off and kind of create their own universe and, and the possibilities and in sort of a theoretical mathematical sense that does exist. But what, what we need to, I mean, what John Teeter and this, this whole um, thing is based off of is no, there is an actual physical universe that breaks off that we can enter and travel to and influence. That you, and- yeah. That we are able to traverse to, to and use for time travel and and things like that. Right. And, and I'm not sure why that is the case with the time travel thing, but John Teeter says so. So yeah. we're just going to go with it for now. Right. And really when it comes down to the John Teeter story, this idea of world lines and different realities and different timelines and different universes existing and these parallel dimensions living side by side, uh, that is the crux to all of the John Teeter apologists. When some of his predictions don't come true, the, the default answer is, well, it's because his timeline is different from ours. Right. And, you know, because he entered our timeline or world line, it changed our world line and our trajectory so that, you know, so it, it kind of becomes non-falsifiable thing you know where right you can't right. really prove it and you can't really falsify it because how, how in the heck are you supposed to prove or falsify it you know the fact that something didn't happen right well there's just an answer for everything right is a thing and he makes some wild claims yeah. i mean he's talking about how there was a an American civil war in 2005 right. and he is warning against this American civil war in 2005. Uh, he talks about world war three breaking out in 2015, which I thought was an interesting date to give it. Um, given the whole 2016 being the extension of 2012, uh, when we get into, you know, some sort of antichrist prophecy thing. Right. Um, but, I mean, he's making some pretty serious claims here. Yeah, yeah. So, and like, I mean, this, uh, 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 it just gets so messy when you, when you, even when you start thinking of him as a hoax, you're like, well, bro, okay, that is quite, <laughs> that is, you are really going for it. <laughs> so, you know, Take and no the, prisoners. Right. And, and the whole psychology to the whole thing is so, um, the whole psychology to the whole John Teeter story is makes it that much more complicated because I mean, there are times when he's speaking and you're like that. To- I'm totally don't even understand like his mode of thought, like his mode of thought. You're like, okay, that he kind of does seem like a time trap. Is this, are you a real dude? <laughs> but then there's other times when it's just so contrived. He's like talking about how, us in this time period are not known for our, you know, our compassion uh, and our our empathy and and how can you eat cheeseburgers when you know they're poisoned? I mean, I say it in that mocking tone, but but really, I mean, cheeseburger, you know, that there's a lot of poison in our food, obviously, but he, he kind of goes off on these rants that you would expect from somebody doing a hoax of a time traveler to come back and complain about. Right, right. You and, know. Yeah, and before we move too far along, I, I did want to bring up, based on the uh, whole concept of the Elliot 
Wheeler model and you know, right. this, this theory. Oliver Williams, who is the guy who's sort of been a, the spokesperson for John Teeter as far as he basically what he did was he collected all the uh, different forum posts that John Teeter made over the uh, few short months that he was here and he created a website. It's you know real basic, johnteeter.com. You guys can go check it out. Um, so he, he's the guy who runs the site and he's the guy that has been on coast to coast several times and talked about John Teeter and talked about where we're at and how he believes he's obviously, you know, sort of a, a, a believer, if you will, you know, of the story. So one thing he does mention in an interview with George Nori that, that really stuck out to me, of course, just because being, you know, a Christian, uh, coming from that Christian perspective and even just a theistic perspective, um, he uses the Elliot Wheeler model effectively to deny a biblical God, at least a Christian God. Here's his logic. He says, how can a God judge us for the decisions that we make in this world line when there are infinite other world lines and infinite copies of myself making different decisions in different parallel universes. And he says, that wouldn't be fair. Right. That's just not fair. And that, that's his way of sort of deflecting uh, or rejecting the idea of a, a, a God that judges, you know, a God right. that actually um, is good in a sense with a, a pure sense of justice that will redeem and things like that. So, Right. It's such a tired argument, I think. It just, in my opinion, the whole this it's not fair like god's not fair how could he do that like a a, a a logical fairness you know people look for a logical fairness that doesn't need to be the case you know what right. i mean they they assume that there needs to be this logical fairness when they're talking about things like multiple universes and world lines and they're saying oh well because there's multiple world lines and because there's infinite parallel universes, God can't judge me. What? <laughs> like, I just, it's just, okay, anyways. But at, at the same time, um, John Teeter himself says, you know, uh, besides the process of time traveling, you really shouldn't be worrying about other world lines. You know, so at the same time, John Teeter himself says, yeah, well, you should, I mean, don't take this multiple world line thing as, you know, any, uh, like, don't make change your life because of this. Right. I mean, you still have to live in your world line, so do it. And, you know. Well, and, and it's, it's kind of an interesting point you bring up because my response to this guy and his whole thing is that, you know, God is in control of time and we can only prove that our timeline exists, you know, and right. therefore, you know, we should be again, like sort of like how John Teeter said, we are only responsible for our timeline here. And, you know, if, if you want to really get into it in this timeline, allegedly, and I believe it to be true, is the timeline where Jesus Christ died and rose again for our sins. So, you know what I mean? It's right, like, right. hey, you know, maybe in a different timeline, something different happened. But Right. And, <laughs> and, and it gets very complicated, and we'll get further into that, because, I mean, he even mentions, mentions how, in some cases, you will travel to a timeline that Jesus Christ was never even born or something, or that's a possibility or right, something. Right, right, right. You know, because there's an infinite number of them, there is, Every situation exists, including one where Jesus did not uh, come down to the earth. But um, I guess that's just sort of a side point. I like how we're talking about these world lines now as if they're like real. The lines are real, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, just a disclaimer. We're talking about these world lines. We don't necessarily think they're real, which is what we're talking about now. On a theoretical basis. It's sort of, uh, I think we're just trying to... Um, address the points that not necessarily attack or try to break down the traditional I right. guess, theistic or Christian worldview. Right. So. Well, and I, I kind of wanted to talk about this whole, like God's not fair thing again, because I just had an experience online. Whoa. Imagine that where this guy was talking about, you know, I mean, it, it was a, it was a, um, 
it was a good and good versus evil argument, you know, like how can there be like, well, his whole thing was, why did God even give us, um, uh, free will? If he just knew that we were going to mess it up and it's not fair. He set us up f- for failure. It's entrapment, you know, and it's like, shut your mouth, please. <laughs> like, it just doesn't, it just comes from this, 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 I don't know. I, I like to call it whiny. It comes from a very whiny theological perspective. Oh, well, yeah. And you, know, and, 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 you know, the second you explain to them, like, look, the only rule that there was in the beginning was don't eat this fruit, please. Can you please not do that? There's nothing good coming out of it. But, you know, in order for free will to be a thing, I mean, I guess there needs to be you know, something to provide a physical artifact of love towards God, which is not eating from this fruit. Right. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if, if there is nothing to be done wrong, free will does not exist. So, I mean, just logically, and these people love logic. So logically there has to be something that you can't do. And so, you know, when you do it, you're not, you're not simply just like, Oh, I fell into God's trap of unfairness and ate from this tree. It's no, you, you spit in his eye and told him you didn't need him anymore because now you know the difference between good and evil and you can be like God's. So, right. So la di da, I'm going to take off with this serpent and thanks for the apple God. Right. And, And even on a different level too, the the concept of just suffering in general, because that is a huge topic that that people bring up in opposition to a Christian God, you know, right? It, it's it's this whole idea of we come from innocence, and a lot of again in the Garden of Eden before the fall, you know, humans were innocent beings effectively. You know, we were we didn't right. really know sin. We, we I guess we might have had knowledge of it, but we didn't really experience it in in the fullest that we do now. Um, and you know, a lot of people talk about how, you know, God is going to restore us to that innocence. And I disagree with that. I actually think that a redeemed world is far better than an innocent world. And I think that's why there that's is there is this sort of fallout is because how are we otherwise supposed to develop characteristics like patience or right. wisdom or, you know, these things don't come about just being innocent. You know, you have right. to sort of go through a time of molding or shaping to get to that point. And so in that sense, the ultimate plan that God has is way bigger and way more glorious than we can ever imagine. And right. it's just, it comes from a really selfish place, I think, to try to, bring the justice argument in, uh, you know, because you're, you're basically saying by, by bringing that argument up, you're basically saying I am God because I determine what is good and wrong and bad. Right. Right. And exactly. That's the point is, is I say, Oh, these people think God's not fair. I don't say that to say God isn't fair. Get used to it. I'm saying that you're working in such a narrow uh, mindset to think that God is not fair in things that he has done. Um, you, you're looking at fairness at, at such an infantile juvenile level. Um, you know, especially right. when you start talking about things like the garden of even Eden and how God entrapped us into sinning and things like that. Well, it's, and it's just but you ridiculous. Know, you know, the, the funniest thing I think <laughs> is that these folks that bring that argument up, and, and everything that surrounds it, you know, saying, oh, there was, you know, God is the evil God, you know, Yahweh is evil. And it, it pushes and, into the Luciferic doctrine, which is right. that Lucifer is the good guy. He freed us from the garden right. with knowledge. And, you know, we, we were no longer uh, slaves to this Yahweh character. And right. so it, it, who, who gave us rules right. and, <laughs> and, you know, it didn't want us to eat apples who didn't want us to have knowledge and so uh, again it's very interesting how even those who have no idea that they are preaching the luciferic doctrine are right well and and that's one thing now this might diverge a little bit but i think that's what gives the whole story so much awesomeness 
and truth. And it sh- just shows me that like, hey, this is actually a real deal, which is that it can be manipulated that way. Are and you, it is manipulated that way. Are you talking about? I'm talking about the Luciferian branch off okay. or, of of the you know the the beginning of mankind. Okay, and where here's this story of um, you know God creates us. He he walks around with us. We are in perfect communion with him, and we are all so happy. You know, there's this one thing: don't eat that. But let's all just live together in peace and harmony. And then. The fact that it is uh, twisted to the Luciferian doctrine of Lucifer coming in, enlightening us, and and giving us knowledge because he is a fair god and he wants what's best for you know the human race and things. The fact that that's even a thing. I mean, what other doctrine has that? I mean, is well, there is there a Muslim doctrine where there's like a separate? Muslim Luciferian doctrine off of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's some Sumerian, old Sumerian texts, and, and I've come across people recently that have really pushed this like, well, the Sumerian doctrines are older than the Bible, therefore it must be true. And that's not necessarily the case either. But, you know, there's stories of the two gods, Enki and Enlil, and they sort of represent uh, Satan and God, if you will. And some have suggested that Yahweh... The, the being that is Yahweh, according to the Sumerians, were the was the one that actually created humanity, you know, genetically altering whatever. And then the other god wanted to help them ascend into beings like them. Right. Uh, but then Yahweh didn't want that to happen. And, and so, again, it's painted as this sort of, you know, the one that gave them knowledge was the good guy. And right. it, it's very interesting because it's almost like Satan beat, not, not not truly, but sort of tried to instill into culture his story, his side of the story, if you will, uh, right. earlier than God. But right. you know, God used a much better method because he used forty people over a span of fifteen hundred years, you know, in right. like three different languages and and all this stuff, and right. wrote history before it happens. I mean, you know, there's all that stuff there that's just better proof, in my opinion, than. Just Sumerian yeah. tablets or anything, but let's. Uh, let's what were we talking about? We were talking travel. about time travel John stuff. Teter- okay. and, you know, and 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 something that um, I will say just because we're in that biblical realm right now, the, the person who brought this up was uh, Gary Stearman of Prophecy in the News. He wrote a book called Time Travelers of the Bible, right? And um, I have not read the book, um, but I've I've listened to some of his some of the things he's talked about, listen to his talk uh, at Branson and things like that. And one of the just interesting points is uh, this idea that there are time travelers in the Bible and, right. and whether that is true or not, I, I don't know, but here's some of the, I guess, evidence, if you will. Um, one of the characters, Elijah, which we see a lot in first and second Kings uh, in the old Testament he doesn't die. He's one of those guys that doesn't die along with Enoch. He, he's uh, he, you know, walks with God. He's taken up by a whirlwind. You know, mm-hmm. he, he just disappears. Right. The next time we see him is in Matthew 17, three, when, um, you know, Jesus gets transfigured on the mountain in front of three disciples and, you know, the disciples look up and boom, there's Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Right. <laughs> and so Gary Stearman theorizes like, Hey, Maybe Elijah was uh, traveled through time. Like maybe he right. got in that whirlwind and boom, he popped out with Jesus to check out what, because this is right before Jesus, you know, goes to the cross and everything. Right. And so, you know, what if, and it's, I think it's a really compelling thing to think about because just right. that little tidbit there shows that, Hey, you know what? God is actually the one in control of time. Right. If he wanted us to travel through time, I am, pretty sure that he can make it happen, you know, but it's not for everyone. I don't think, uh, just from a purely psychological standpoint, I don't think people would be able to handle, um, as cool as it sounds and, and whatever, you know, with time travel, I don't think it would be the, you know, 
Back to the Future. Right. Great Scott, you know, like getting well, things right. back in order. And, and as, as, as disappointed as I am to agree with you, I, I sort of do. Um, John Teeter even talks about how in 2036, there are still people who don't believe in time travel. I mean, time travel has now been militarized as being used by the government. Um, you know, he, 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 you know, on the John Teeter website, you can see a, a rendering of, you know, the temporal recon unit patch that he has which looks really really scampy like it is a pretty if, if if there really was a logo from 2036 i would expect some i mean i don't know we'll think we'll think oh, well let's talk about his culture here in a second after right we, right because that's sort I, of I, makes did, sense. I did think about that when when i saw it and i you know it made right. sense to some regard but right yeah, it's, it sort of makes sense but anyways yeah uh, uh he even johnny teeter even talks about how in 2036 and here i am talking about him like he's real again but um <laughs> that's what we do here <laughs> that's what we do here yeah yeah <laughs> he uh he talks about how people still don't really believe in time travel and it's been militarized and it's used and it's a normal thing. His, his time machine is made by GE general electric makes time machines in 2036 in his, in, in his world line. And not only that, but it's, it's, it's not a machine like you get inside of it. That's not what it is. It's a it's a box type. Well, more or less, it's a box that you put the box inside of like a car or something like that. Right. And then the box transports the car and you into like um to wherever you're going. Now the the box generates a, a gravity field which sort of engulfs the car and sort of actually it's kind of funny. It talks about how the gravity field uh picks up some of the earth below the car and right. transports that back in time too. Right. So you sort of have this this car going through time with like a lump of dirt beneath it. Or something like that. It's really wacky, and it's. I mean, saying it out loud when I'm reading it, I'm like, "Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay." But now I'm saying it out loud. It's like that is the wackiest thing I've ever like heard. <laughs> like, and he, he's talking about how he came back in a 1967 Chevrolet. That's right. So, okay, guys. Okay, a 1967 <laughs> Chevrolet. The dirt still underneath it <laughs> is traveling through time and space through across parallel dimensions. I mean, I just, I'm thinking I'm crazy forever even considering We're this. crazy for bringing this up on a show, apparently. I, know. I never, I just took the time to picture that in my mind right now. And now it's just, I, this, this is awesome. I need... <laughs> I need to go get a 19. It's like, why? Why not? a? I mean, why did we choose a DeLorean? Why not a 1967 Chevrolet? Anyways. Yeah, DeLoreans look cooler. It, uh, yeah. You know, well, that's arguable, but. Especially I, when they fly through the air. Yeah. With dirt with still trash beneath, <laughs> beneath it. Yeah. Being, <laughs> being fed by trash. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Anyways, right. what we were talking about, we were the talking culture, about the culture of 2036, the culture according of 2000, to John Teeter. Right, right. Okay. And it's, it's interesting because it sounds like its own sort of type of utopia. You know, it actually sounds kind of great. What it is, is, um, you know, it, this is post, this is post a world war three. Um, and everything's sort of gone backwards. They talk about how they, John Teeter talks about how, um, it, everything is much more community based. Everything he he keeps talking about how my favorite thing is to hug my family. My favorite thing is to be with my family. My favorite thing about the future is to be with me. You know, he's it's very much family and community focused, right. which sounds good. I mean, that's yeah, that that's wonderful. Um, he talks about how it's much more akin to like farm life. Like everybody works, everybody's working for the community. He says his job was like picking oranges or something um, and shipping them on a sailboat up the, you know, some river in Florida. I mean, it seems like this very 
Um, I think I've mentioned it before, and Gons, I've showed you this, which is uh, an animated series by Tom Hanks, and it's called Electric City. Right. And it's sort of a post-apocalyptic sort of thing. But um, you, you guys can check it out. It's uh, Electric City, Tom Hanks' Electric City. And it, that really seems kind of what the 2036 John Teeter future reality kind of seems like almost like a step backwards although certain technologies still still exist he talks about how doctors are no like people aren't really concerned with health care as much he talks about how if you get a really bad disease you just die you just die like yeah. you, that's just what you do and you accept it like you know you're like oh i got this disease it's my time to die and you die and he talks about how doctors are much more focused on things more like uh, he'd see, he he I think the words he uses is it's much more like the old west doctors right where it's more about fixing broken arms or delivering babies or um, things like that it's not so much about like brain research and and uh, things like that he says there are genetic um, they do grow organs um, there are genetic uh, cures for things um cancer and aids are still not completely curable you know just stuff like that it's 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 a very interesting picture that he paints which gives a whole new aspect to his believability right um you know it's just not what you would expect from a time future yeah the future exactly (laughs) it's it's it almost is completely counter to what you and i talk about right i know it is let me read something that he posted in um, February 8th of 2001. And it not only does it paint a picture of 2036, but it sort of gets back to some of the things that we were talking about just a minute ago. But he says here, the war had very profound effects on people and how they relate to each other. As individuals, almost everyone in 2036 is very familiar with death. We all have stories of loved ones that have died from disease, war, or acts of inhumanity. Most of us have even taken part in dishing the same things out to the other side. As a result, we have become far more compassionate to the ones we love, but much less forgiving, or much less probably, like it says mush, but I think it's much, much less forgiving to those who don't pull their weight. We are right. more accepting of others' differences in our community because we depend on them to survive. We are also more conservative with our resources and closer to God because for a period, life on earth was hell. And then right. he goes on here and he says, the other major difference is in the concept of good and evil. With multiple worlds come multiple decisions and outcomes. For every good act, there's an equal and possible bad act on another world line. Taken to the extreme, this must mean that in God's eyes, there is no total good and total bad in the superverse. It's balance, it balances itself out to infinity. I believe we are judged on the decisions we make as individuals and the good slash evil I see on my world line is an illusion that has no worth to God. My reaction to it is what's most important to God. Although this may seem rather heartless, it does allow me to see past the evil that people do and acknowledge the core of potential goodness inside them. So right. this is what John Teeter says, um, right. you know, sort of tying in what we were talking about before a little bit too. Well, and he's very consistent with his Christian agnosticism. Right. He is he claims to be a Christian agnostic and that is very very consistent with that. And you know, there there is um logical merit to Christian agnostics. I will give them that. I don't necessarily believe that, you know, it's that's the way to go, but um it's very interesting. And that's just another part. And, and just to give another, I, I mentioned how just his, I don't know, the, his thought processes are sort of, um, I don't even know what to call it. I would say tweaked or just not even on the same track. Somebody asked him, can you tell us the foods that are unsafe now? Um, Cause he keeps talking about the poison in the food. Is there anything we can do to pre- prepare for the war you're describing? And he makes this list and he says, number one is do not eat or use products from any animal that is fed and eats 
parts of its own dead, which, okay, I can take that advice. That sounds like good advice. But on a list, the number one thing on a list of, can you tell us the foods that are, are unsafe now? Is there anything we can do to prepare for the war you are describing? The number one thing is do not eat or use product, <clears throat> products from any animal that is fed and eats parts of its own dead. Number two is do not kiss or have intimate relations with anyone you do not know. I mean, there's just such a bizarre list of things here. Then it goes on to say, learn basic sanitation and water purification, be comfortable around firearms, you know, but just the way he goes, I don't know. I mean, does that, is that weird to you, Gons, or is that just me? A little bit. I mean, there's a part of me that my first thought when I heard you read a couple of those things, especially the second one, the first one seems just sort of like completely out of our paradigm and, and almost, you know, right. maybe purposefully sort of throwing out something weird to, you know, just for the sake of being weird. Uh, but the second one <laughs> reminded me of perhaps a cycle. If, if this guy is a total hoax, um, some kind of psychological or emotional um, scarring that <laughs> he has some sort of jealousy or something towards maybe some people around him that, you know, are partiers or something. I don't know. I'm just getting this, this vision of like, I know. I mean, it's just so personal issues going on there. Not so much. I universal. guess. I, I don't know. I'm mean, that's just I my first, my first, Th uh, that's definitely a thing. And there are s some other things. We'll, we'll just go down on down the list, but it just shows like this strange, mode of thinking you know yeah that's something where to me i read that i'm like yeah this guy's not from around here you know what i mean right anyways let's go on number three it says learn basic sanitation water purification four be comfortable around firearms learn to shoot, shoot and clean a gun it's pretty straightforward he's talking about a war be um get a good first aid kit and learn how to use it good advice for everyone six find five people within 100 miles that you trust with your life and stay in contact with them i don't there's a i think there's a lot of people who would not be able to find five people within 100 miles that you trust with your life and keep in contact with i think that kind of speaks to sort of a more community-based mindset right. um seven this one's interesting. Get a copy of the U.S. Constitution and read it. Okay. He talks a lot about the new Constitution in 2036. Right. The, in 2036, there's, there's this new government that has five presidents of the United States, um, a brand new U.S. Constitution, and things like that. He's very much into this, and he... he you know, it's sort of part of his thing, like warning us against how bad the government is as if we didn't already know. But anyways, eight, eat less. See, there's just no like, these don't build on each other. They don't, <laughs> I mean, it's just so random. Nine, get a bicycle and two sets of spare tires, ride at 10 miles a week. Okay. okay. 10, consider what you would bring with you if you had to leave your home in 10 minutes and never return. And, you know, that's something we should all have down anyways. But I mean, just the fact that don't, I don't know, it's just so weird. There's just so many weird things like this that yeah. make you think like this could, I don't know. I mean, it just seems like he's operating on some other level. Like, I get that he claims to know things that we don't, but we have don't eat animals that eat parts of their own dead. Don't kiss or have intimate relations with strangers. Right. Get a copy of the U S constitution, <laughs> eat less and ride a bike on the same <laughs> list, list of priorities. You know, it's just the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. But yeah. at the same time, it's almost so bizarre. You're like, okay, maybe I maybe, should like, yeah, maybe, maybe I this guy should, is for real. Maybe I should, uh, you know, stop, kissing or having intimate relations with anyone I do not know. <laughs> well, you know, I, there, there are a lot of people who asked questions that we would ask, you know, you know, has the Antichrist right. showed up? Has Jesus returned? Those types of questions were asked in the forum. And, um, you know, he answered that, you know, Jesus hasn't returned. Um, he says at one point that, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that think that revelations has come to pass, uh, he says here that, however, the new fear is that Christ has returned. He's not telling us, and he's very angry. 
Uh, then 2036 that's the fear that's the fear is yeah that, that, she's back but he's not telling us so that would be, be that would be a fear that, yeah, <laughs> um and then somebody asked about the antichrist and um he's he responds here he says uh i understand the question about the antichrist but i must admit i hadn't given it much thought my initial reaction is to consider how the antichrist would affect my life if i can identify him slash her if your life became a sort of hell anyways would it matter if the Antichrist was real? Yeah. Uh, it's just very interesting. Very yeah. interesting. It, that it's there's... interesting to me because it almost shows, again, we're just talking at if, it almost shows that world events happened and he was just there almost, you know, people are just bystanders living in this world that is being affected by the Antichrist. You know, it, it, does that make sense? Right. Almost, almost, it's like if if we didn't know the Antichrist was there, I mean, we all talk about like, oh, when the Antichrist comes, he's going to be this guy, right. right? I mean, we don't really consider that maybe the Antichrist is here now. He is working now to accomplish Right, and um, we have no things. idea. Right, and so it's interesting that that is how he talks. He doesn't even talk like, oh no, the Antichrist, he was no big deal. You know, it's, yeah, he was he's probably somewhere doing something, but I was too busy fighting for my life in a shotgun squad when I was 13 years old right, fighting right, in the right. rebel army. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's almost legitimate. Like it almost seems like more real life than what we talk about. Well, if you were to create a character and try to establish personality and, you know, just all the traits of a good, realistic, believable character in a story, John Teeter has those elements, a lot of, right. a lot of those elements of, you know, like you said, sort of this personal view of life rather than sort of a universal Thing, right thing and, and a lot of his answers are kind of like that like you know my right. from my experience this is what's going on and you know why right. would you care and because and and I find it interesting too because he welcomes people to ask questions and then people ask you know these big questions and um I I don't know it, there's a part of me if I if I were a time traveler I I might answer it differently <laughs> you know I might right. try to address those bigger questions. In, oh, cause in, that's in just that's, who we are. I, I know. I know that's our thing. That's our thing. But at the same time, it's just sort of, uh, it's just weird. You're right. It's, it's very bizarre. It's very bizarre. And he comes, he doesn't come as some, I don't know. He comes, he's, he was on a mission. He's in the military. He was on a mission, stopped by 75, got the computer, decided to stop by not, you know, the year 2000, hit up his parents, say what's up. And then, um, and then just start talking. And yeah, and, and like you said, he, he comes from a, a more of a personal view on things rather than where if you and I used our time machine that we have, it would be like, Don't tell let's anybody. go, let's go rescue Lincoln. Let's go. You know what I mean? Like, let's go do this stuff and tell everybody and do cool stuff. And he's just like, oh, no, yeah, I know. I've had a really messed up life. I'm just here doing my job, actually. I'm just going to go back here soon. Yeah, and he talks about this report that he's writing, um, and he asks other people questions. And he's very much like, hey, you guys are all asking the same questions. I'm I'm going to keep answering them, but, you know, if read, read other posts, please. Because yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't want to annoy well, you people. Well, he, he so, sort of gets annoyed with art, with, I mean, you know, I guess this world line too, you know, right. cause there were some people that asked like, Oh, you know, what's the lotto numbers that are going to, you know, win and blah, blah, blah. Right. And he gets all bitter about that. He and gets he goes very off. bitter. He gets very, yeah, he has a lot of animosity. It's really funny <laughs> to, to see. So, people ask him, Oh yeah. Well, if, if you're a time traveler, then who won the Super Bowl in 2012? 
He's like, I don't know. That's a stupid question, and you're stupid for asking it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just, he's he does just, get really upset. I think he 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 has some really choice words for for people in our time time period. I don't, I don't have it right in front of me, but no, no, he does. He absolutely does. He's not very impressed with us at all. No, but let's talk about. I don't know. Let's talk about God a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down I'm, with that. I'm okay with that. I mean, I, I could literally talk about this guy forever, just just saying, just, I don't know, talking about him to you guys out there listening. But Okay, so let's actually cover our basis here as far as if this is true. And, and obviously, there's a lot of holes, and we didn't even bring up some of the holes that are sort of in the story and sort of the there's all sorts of bizarre stuff with a lawyer that, you know, is protecting the mom and I mean, we can get into all that, but like you said, Basil, we can we can talk about this guy all day. <laughs> right? No, we totally we totally could. And, and, and there's so much uh, you can read through the website yourself. And and again, this is why we created the forum. By the way, little plug there for the forum. Bring some of these things up. You know, there's a lot to talk about about this guy, and a lot of you know speculation that can be done. But as um stewards, if we will, what would be the implications of our faith if this guy is telling the truth, if if this, you know, multiple dimension is real, if time travel is possible and and all these things. I mean, if this story is totally true, then what does it mean for us and what does it mean for the you know I love that question truth. Right. I love that question. Because the answer thing. To me, the answer is absolutely nothing. It's almost like, what is it? It's almost like the evolution thing. Yeah. But people say, okay, well, if evolution is true, if it is absolutely 100% true, or if, you know, if it is, you know, true in some sense, what does that mean? Doesn't that just destroy your faith in Jesus? No, not a single bit it has nothing to do with uh what jesus came to do for us multiple universes has nothing to do with jesus dying on the cross and and it has nothing to do with anything i mean it's there if if that is true then i feel sorry for some of you know the other me's in what's called the super universe making less you know less agreeable decisions, but where I'm standing now, it makes no difference whether the John Teeter story is true or not. I would almost want it to be true. I almost want this whole multiple universe thing to right, be, it'd be it'd just make us a, living. Right. Just the, it would just make me so much more grateful for what I have now. And, you know, and being, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. Anyways, it means nothing. <laughs> well, yeah. To me, does it? What does it mean to you? It would. Ch- it would completely change m- my life. <laughs> um. No, no. no I, I. I think everything you've ever <laughs> everything known. Everything I've ever known up until this point will be completely shattered. No. I, you know, uh, being someone I, probably like yourself that watched you know, that loved the movie back to the future and, right. <laughs> and all this stuff. I don't think it changes anything because really when it comes down to, we're talking about God here. We're talking about the creator of the universe, the one who authored life, the one who authored our minds, the ability to rationalize the ability to understand the world around us and the to, ability to send a 1967 Chevrolet exactly through time with the dirt still under the tires. <laughs> but here's the thing. If it, even if it is true, we are still working under the confines of the universe that was created by God. Right. And in that sense, we're not going to surprise God by time traveling. I mean, right. who knows? Maybe, the whole concept of time travel and and actually the reality of time travel is sort of woven into how things are going to play out. And we just, you know, maybe it is in the Bible in one way that we don't understand at this point in time, but maybe there's a, there's a way that things will make, you know, be clearer in the future. 
Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't really change because again, I, I alluded to this earlier, but we can only be responsible for the timeline or whatever that we're in now. And whether there's an outside influence from another time period or aliens or whatever, we are only responsible for you know our decisions here now. That's all we can really prove exists to some extent. I mean, unless you want to try to prove that nothing exists, which good luck. But you know what I'm saying? That our responsibility falls on here now. And, yeah. and then like I mentioned earlier, effectively, this timeline, this world line, if you will, right. is the one where Jesus Christ came, died, and rose again. And um, God, the author of all of this anyway, gave us uh, through the scriptures, his plan, his character, his being, his, you know, his expressing his love for humanity. And right. um, I, I, how does time travel change any of that? You know? So you're telling me it's not as devastating as a, uh... Mr. Oliver tells us. <laughs> Oliver. Yeah, the guy who. Uh, I don't remember either. Uh, the guy who goes on coast to coast and talks about. No, I think he is using this concept of the Everett Wheeler and this whole idea of a multiverse as a, as a crutch to reject God. Just another right. reason to reject God. When really, <laughs> the idea can be spun around the other way and say, no, look, actually, it might prove God is a lot smarter than we think because he knows that the one life that we're experiencing is the one we're in now. Right. And, um, you know, and, and uh, interestingly, let me just bring this up real quick, how John Teeter talked about how he believes the soul of a human is sort of the collective being of who we are, regardless of uh, which timeline you're in. You know, which, right. which is a very, I mean, that's sort of a deep concept, you know? It really is. Um, so is there some truth to that? I have no idea. But in my personal just outlook on the future, uh, I do think there's going to be some kind of world war. Um, and I do think life as we sort of know it now is sort of, it's going to change. But even if it doesn't, it's not, I don't think it's going to necessarily look like the world that you know, John Teeter explains in 2036. I mean, I have no proof of that, but right. my, my whole vision or trajectory of the future is more along the lines of uh, great technological advancement. Um, but not to the point where we're necessarily time traveling to this level, um, or at least not publicly. And, uh, you know, I, I, th I think there's, we're going to have, different problems. I don't think the kinds of problems he explains are going to be the problems that we're going to be facing. Um, right. and, and I think that's, that's sort of why we started Canary Cry Radio is, you know, our, our topic was technology and, and uh, transhumanism and bioengineering and all this stuff. I, I truly believe that that is a bigger issue that's facing our future than, uh, you know, I don't know. Time attacks, traveling attacks from time traveling. And, and, and uh, I, I think like the Christian agnostics, <laughs> Yeah, and like the mad cow disease breaking out in 2036 and like claiming half of America or something. Right. No, he said three billion three people. Three billion people die in I think that's the, that's World War Three though, right? In two thousand fifteen. Right, yeah. So, so so if if you know So get ready everybody. If half the world disappears or dies, I guess, in the next right. uh three years, then you know, we can say, Hey Then we'll know. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. John Teeter. Make sure to ch check it out. I mean, there is so much stuff we did not cover. But thanks for bearing with us on this show. It's a very interesting... <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whoa. But thanks thanks for bearing with us on this show, everybody. Uh, I, I hope you um, got something out of it. I know uh, I, I, we took a lot of time to look into this John Teeter fellow. Um, take a couple minutes, go to the website or not, just Google search it or something. He's all over the place. Um, there's a lot of info out there on him trying to, you know, debunk him. There's some apologeticists for him. Um, so yeah, go check it out. There's a Let lawyer who says that, <laughs> well, this is the same lawyer that's protecting, uh, allegedly protecting John Teeter's mom. Right. Says that he saw... Video footage of uh, John Taylor right. leaving this world line. So right. So who knows? Who knows? But go check it out. 
Uh, we're going to have the forum. Make sure to go talk about it in the forum. Every- and uh, once again, thanks for tuning in to Canary Cry Radio. And as always, think outside the cage. Thank you for listening to this episode of Canary Cry Radio. The show notes for this episode and many others are available at canarycryradio.com. Make sure to connect and like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash canarycryradio. Follow us on Twitter at Canary Cry Radio. If you would like to share the show in video format, you can find us on YouTube by searching Canary Cry Radio. Review us on iTunes with five stars and give us a thumbs up on stumbleupon.com. We would like to thank those of you who have given us your support, prayers, and donations. If you would like to join us and support Canary Cry Radio financially, you could do so by visiting canarycryradio.com and clicking the support tab. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, remember to think outside the cage.